All right, back on the Young Turks. Uh, I saw this great column by Saul Friedman. Uh, he's a columnist for Gray Matters. It's called Consequences of Unequal Distribution of Wealth, The Rich Get Richer. Uh, and we want to bring him on, and he's on with us now. Saul, welcome to the Young Turks. How are you? Oh, fantastic. Uh, great to have you here. Uh, first, um, let me ask you the simple question of have the rich gotten richer, and how do we know that over the last, let's say, 10 years? Well, it's, uh, it's pretty obvious from the writings of uh, Dean Baker or Robert Rice. Um, you know, as I point out in the piece that I wrote, uh, today's CEOs are paid more than 350 times that of the average worker. We have more billionaires now who have produced nothing but paper uh, all over the country. Uh, the um, amounts of money that are being made out of Wall Street, out of simply shoveling paper around, is, has been enormous. Uh, the, uh, the head of Walmart is, the, is probably the richest man in America. Uh, and, and this is on the backs of workers who, pay, who are paid minimum wage or less. Uh, it's all around us the fact that uh, we have these enormously wealthy people uh, who are, I'm not talking about people like Warren Buffett or uh, Bill Gates. I'm not talking about people who actually invest or who manufacture something or who have invented something. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this is the first time, I, I believe, since maybe the Gilded Age, when people who simply trade stocks, bonds, and other uh, other things around simply push paper on making scads of money. You know, I, I, so let me jump in there because I, I, you had a great stat in here. It's actually you were quoting Michelle Singletary from the Washington Post, who wrote an article showing that in the last ten years, for example. Uh, the top 1% of earners, on average, their income went up 281%, and that per household, their income went up 900, or I should say their assets, went up $973,000, yes. which is gigantic. And, uh, you know, when I saw that, I thought, you know what, this economy that crashed for everybody else, it worked for some people, and you got to give Michelle Singletary for going out there and... Our formula is this. Oh, that's the difference. We go out, we hit people in the mouth. Number one. <laughs> Number one. That's what she did there. That was a different Mike Singletary. But anyway, uh, but so, you know, you see that it's working for the rich, you know, so mission accomplished with the tax cuts. Yes, S but as the authors of this, of this book, The Spirit Level, point out, even though they are making lots of money, what they're doing is riding atop an economy that is exploitative and so unequal that it comes back to haunt them. Right now, we are still in a great recession. The Great Depression uh, you know, hurt an awful lot of small people, but it also hurt the country and the country's future. So what these authors are trying to point out is that unequal distribution of wealth in many ways affects the people on top as well as on the bottom. The people on the bottom, of course, suffer greatly physically. The people on the top don't. But nevertheless, they're sitting on a powder keg. In the Great Depression, we had the rise of the union movement. We had lots of people running around calling for revolution, which was uh, thwarted by the New Deal. So it's not just the poor people or the, the smaller people who get hurt, but even but the people who are running the society are, are being hurt. Right. That's what these authors point out. 
and that's why I wanted to have you on the show to talk about it, because that's an, also an interesting army. It looks like the rich are getting richer, but actually they're also getting hurt, too. And the book that he's referring to is The Spirit Level, Why Greater Equality Makes Societies Stronger, actually. Saul Friedman, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Oh, okay. All right. And, uh, and you can read more from Saul at Gray Matters. Makes a bunch of great points, including uh, the states with the highest inequality in the country are, are southern states, and they wind up having the worst uh, you know, ramifications of that, highest problems with health, uh, et cetera, and other socioeconomic uh, conditions because of that great inequality. Nobody wins when you have this kind of inequality. And so it's, it's something we got to think about. And the one thing Saul pointed out there is, look, things changed in the Depression because people were worried that people were going to take stuff into their own hands. I mean, I hope it doesn't have to get ugly before it gets better, right? And I hope, because that ugliness doesn't help anybody, right? And, and you know who's ready to exploit that ugliness, the right wing in this country. So we got to be careful about that, and we got to be careful where we're headed, because, you know, my sense is we're headed towards a second crash. Uh, but we, these people in power, they don't get, it's not that they don't get it, it's, that it's to their advantage to keep taking that extra 281% in gains, an extra $973,000 in their pocket, right? And we got to get on top of that and fix that before things get much, much worse. All right, we'll be right back.